guys. How are you guys doing today? Happy Mother's Day to everybody. This is your girl, Anique, and it is Chit Chat TV, where we have those hard conversations. Guys, we have a special guest today, but before we do that, if you don't have me on Chit Chat TV underscore, go on over right now on the gram, and I promise I'll follow back. Scoot on over to the profile too, and follow me on YouTube for all contests. Listen, over here at Chit Chat TV, we have those hard conversations. We promote com conversations that are hard to talk about. You know what I'm saying? But today we're having a easy talk, a real talk, and I have my special guest, my Auntie Marvette. Welcome to Chit Chat TV. How you feeling? I'm feeling very well. You're looking well. Thank you. We're having a natural conversation as though you guys are not even in the background. Because with me and my aunt, she's like a mother to me. So we can share a little bit about motherhood today. I'm not technically a mother yet, but I have been mothered. And I'm, you know, I have a lot of privilege to meet and be around a lot of good people, good mothers, like my aunt here. So welcome again so i want to ask you a couple questions because a lot of people have not met marvet clayton a lot of people don't know who marvet is a lot of people don't know marvet's you know story and when you look at her she's so beautiful it looks like maybe she just lived a great life but today is mother's day and i want her to share her story and her little experience about her life as a mother so tell the people when did you first have your child when i was 19 years old and um, was it easy? To, I want you to share your how many children you have, where, where, where you have your children, how you grow up. Because a lot of people see us in America. Guys, we're Jamaicans, you know what I'm saying? But coming from Jamaica, it's not always easy. So just tell them a little bit about you being a mother in Jamaica. When I'm a mother, I have four children. And I have them every year. Actually, for the same husband. Thank God for that. Hallelujah! And... Um, one was born 1980, one was born 1981, and one was born 1982, and one was born 1985. It was a very rough time growing up. The only good thing about that you have family that was there to help you through the struggles that you're going through. So what are some of the struggles you faced when you first had your first child at 19. I know you have four kids right now, but let's start from the beginning. When you had your child at 19, and a lot of people would say, okay, that would be considered a teenage mom. But back in those days, a lot of times, people had children early. You were considered basically an adult at a certain age. In that era, it was different. Now, you know, at 19, usually when we have children, it's, it's, it's looked upon different. But tell the people about Jamaica in that time when you were 19, how was it having your first child? Rough up because you have them and uh, do you you have me appearance but my mother have 11 of us and they always have to be working they always have to go to work so you have to wash your clothes with your hands the baby diapers you have to wash them out and put them to wash them out and everything so it was rough it was a lot of hard labor it was a lot of hard labor so did the other children have to assist each other while you go out and work and what kind of jobs did you do at those times? Well, I wasn't very educated at those times. I wasn't very educated. So I had to sometimes take the, the, the little ones with me to go to people's home and wash clothes. Wash clothes to get money so I could... Um, so you could say it's, it was pretty difficult for auntie growing up. And I've had the privilege, guys, of hearing this story. But many mothers don't. And a lot of times they feel very, you know, you know, shy to share their story. But there's a lot of mothers that you look at them now, you never think they have been through those struggles. So with her stating that she never had an education, think about it. Finding a job had to be hard. So who is it that assisted you in those times? Well, first you got God that helps you to manage. And, you know, sometimes you, like... My one daughter was telling me that um, when I go wash the people's clothes, and, and I was young, and they give you a lot of clothes to wash with your hands. So when you're done washing the clothes, you try to see if you could do something after that. So I was buying some bad juice, and I put them in the fridge, and I go with, with little biscuits and sell it. And the children see me. I hide because I didn't want the children to know what I was doing. But they see me and they run me around the town to try to find where I was. And I, I tried to hit myself because I didn't want them to know 
know what I was doing just to make some extra money so I should could make sure they have. So you basically just did whatever it took to take care of your kids. Yes. And guys, we see over here at Chit Chat TV, we're not ashamed to share our experiences and be comfortable in it, admitting that these things make us who we are today. So with you doing those hard work and the kids coming around, eventually knowing what you do, did that teach them the importance of work? Yes. What did that do for your kids? It, Tell it, the people. It teach them a lesson because it makes them realize that nothing is down to, it, to you. And uh, they come up and see their parents work hard, like our parents, my father work in the mill, my mother work on the mill, my father um, do gardening, and my father and mother works hard. And we as a kid, we had to learn how to plant corn and peas and every, all those things. And we had to do those things. So we didn't have no other choice by learning how to work. So guys, I am so grateful to even have Auntie share this with you because I also grew up in Jamaica. And sometimes growing up in a third world country, it's, it's, you develop a hunger for a change. And you oftentimes have to do labor that a lot of people in countries like America, children at least, don't have to do. And I can honestly say, me working and learning ethics and stuff and all these things, I learned it from Jamaica too. I learned it from, you know, having difficult times and having to see how people struggle and that it's not the worst to struggle. It's not, you know, something that we ought to throw out. It is something that we ought to take with us to the rest in our in the rest of our life because like she said, it teach her children something when you have struggled. Because sometimes when we have life too easy, we don't value it. Don't you think so? Right, right. So we're gonna bounce a little bit further. And I want you to share with the people about your mother and when she mothered you. You shared about your children and how um, you mothered them. And I know this might be an emotional part for us because we lost, you know, you know, somebody special to us this past January. And my grandma, her mother, and she had 11 kids. So this is one of the 11. And I want you to tell the people what it was like for you growing up and being mothered by Pearlie Mitchell. My, my mother was a very extraordinary woman. She was a woman with character. She was a woman with values. She would, would never give up for anything. She takes care of us and she takes so much good care of us. And not only us, but she was always there with other people's children. Our house was always filled, filled with, with people, children come from all over the grove and in my mother's house. And she, she cares for every, every single person that comes in that lady's life. She, she just mother, she just mother. She was a, a mother of, of values. She was everything that anybody could ask for from a mother. She. She's everything, She's everything, clearly. Words, there's not enough words to express. Let me tell you all something about my grandmother. You know what I'm saying? Pearlie Mitchell had 11 kids. And you know when you have 11 kids, it's a lot of needs. So you got to be some kind of woman to even take care of one, two, much 11. You know what I'm saying? So I feel as though she had to be an extraordinary woman mm -hmm. for that to happen. She had to be a strong woman for that to happen. But she didn't only care for her children. She didn't care only for her household. One thing I can tell you, my grandma is always cooking something. Ever since I was a child, my grandma has always been cooking something. We go to the house, there's food. Because she's feeding not only her kids, but other people's kids. Mm -hmm. So now you, with that, when you, with those kids, extra kids coming into the house, did you guys start building um, brotherly and sisterly relationships and and have that relate those relationships progressed even till today right and that's why I'm saying that I love it because with me my brothers and sister we are all so close especially the girls we are knit and when one hurt you feel the hurts in the in the old family sometimes when I have a problem I don't want to tell them because when you tell them the problems everybody gets hurt from the problem so sometimes they said I'm secretive, but I don't think I'm secretive, but I just think that 
I saved them sometimes the pain because that's how the family are and that's how my mother was. She. Let me tell you guys something. Sometimes when you're a mother, you want to hide the pain. But remember that your children are now mothers and fathers. So pain is something, Auntie, we relate to. Now, I know I don't have, a, I don't have children, but I have learned how to mother by watching women like you. Her daughter is my best friend. And sometimes we make mistakes as parents and sometimes we make mistakes as children. I feel like it's perfectly okay as long as we still got each right. other. You know what I'm saying? Right now, I don't have a, we don't have grandma here anymore, but her name lives on forever. Why does her name live on? Because of the motherly activities she have done, the motherly works she have done. And I don't think motherhood stops even sometimes when you lose that person, but the seeds that was planted in you, auntie, you have had an opportunity to put it in your own children. Oh my God, guys, yes. I am excited. And we want to say happy Mother's yes. Day and to the mothers out there. Look at Auntie, she just, she want to share something. Come on, go ahead. Grab it. Where is that flower? Where those flowers? Want Grab mine, Julie. Bring the flowers, please. Guys, so, you know, we're not going to go too deep in this, but we wanted to just let you guys know we thank you all the mothers out there keep doing what you're doing don't give up even though it's hard do what it takes and know and let you let your children know that motherhood is a journey that never ends don't let nobody tear you down even if you made mistakes even if stuff happened that you didn't agree with auntie let me ask something what was one of the hardest things you had to deal with in motherhood the oldest thing I have to do with is was watching my daughter go to jail. I, for all two years, I didn't know I could have make it as a mother because she was a wonderful, wonderful, most wonderful child you can ever met. And when she end up into drugs and um, and she end up trying to kill herself. You know. I feel it. I, I, I know what, I didn't know exactly what was going on with her, but I could feel the pain. When you're a mother, you know, you can feel the pain. You don't know sometimes exactly what is going on with that child, but you know something is going on with her. And that was my worst time as a mother that I have faced, to watch my child is in a, in a handcuff. How did you go from watching that, the worst moment in your life, to sitting here on this couch and encouraged mm. and moving on even as a mother. Because, looking beautiful like because, this. Because you have to. You have to move on regardless of life. You have to move on because you have to make other people know that there is life. Can you look right into the camera and tell a young woman out there today that don't feel like they can move on. I, we got three cameras. We're going to look at all of them. They don't feel like they can move on. But tell somebody encourage somebody today that they can move on yes there is a move on path yes because first thing you you got to realize that this battle that you're fighting you cannot fight it on your home and that's where it helps me that i know that this battle i couldn't fight it on my home so god help me and my family help me through this and the church people do not believe in church some people don't want to believe it but the the, the strength that i get out of this that is able to bring me to all this is the people that was there for me, the people that pray. Sometimes you don't see them, but they pray. Yes. The, those are the, what encourage you to, to keep going. Yes. She could have basically isolated herself and shut herself down, and it would have been justified. Guys, it literally would have been justified. But you got to pick up whatever happened and you just got to move on you got to hold on to somebody or Don, like she said she she was a part of the church she has her family members and she hold on to somebody because in those vulnerable moments the enemy the devil will try to let you feel like you ought to give up you ought to throw in the towel and so many women tried throwing in the towel but we're here to encourage you guys that keep going on on your journey to motherhood, when your children make mistakes, continue to stick by their side. 
And even though your daughter is in jail, she's still a mother. Yeah. Talk about a little bit about jail and how you how you deal with it now. Mother would will never change because when you're a mother, you're a mother. That don't change. And some people say, oh, I, I'm not gonna help my child because she do that and she do that. But a true mother is gonna be there regardless of how rough the road is. A true mother is gonna be there. And no matter what your children are going through, you are gonna be their greatest strength. And if you walk away from them, do you ex who else do you expect to be there for them? You gotta be standing up as, as a mother and be there for them. And you only cannot be only a mother for your children. You have to be a mother for other people's children. And that's where you get your strength from, from being a mother to other others. Let me say this, many people value their own children and they don't value other people's children. That just put a thought in my mind. The same way you want your children to be treated is the same way you ought to treat other people's children. If you don't want people to downgrade and degrade your children, even when they make mistakes, just do the same thing. I feel like if we change our perspective on this, we change our minds and we actually look out for each other, this relationship can be more than biological mothers, but we can have some mothers existing that are just mothers because they had that motherly heart. Guys, I am so excited and we want to do a special shout out today. I want to shout out my mother, Miss Winifred Foster, all the way in Florida, okay, West Palm Beach. Listen, lady, you is the bomb.com. Okay, let me tell you about yourself. A woman like you can't even, I can't even put it in words. You have taught me so much. And here I go with your sister on the couch. And I'm telling you, they do tell me we look alike. But I want to tell you Happy Mother's Day. And I love you so much. Aunt, anybody you want to shout out? I want to shout out to my sisters. All my sister, Hylene, Maureen. Uh, they call her Lily White. Lily White! Lily White. And my friend, Monica, which is a special. She's my friend, but she's more like a sister friend. And shout out to her because she is the one that helps me when we go into our time. She always did different. Shout out to Sister Stella. Sister, Sister Stella. Stella. Shout her out because Sister Stella was a rock in a hard place when I feel like I couldn't go no much further. That lady was always there That's to work right. that helping hand. She don't, she might not have a, a child of her own, but she's everybody's mother. You know, that just put something in my mind. Let's be appreciative. Let's not forget those that have done so much for us. And I also want to shout out my sisters, Shelly, Carlene, and Venice. Girls, you are beautiful. And as much as I'm the baby of the group, I must say I feel like I'm the oldest, you know what I'm saying? So, guys, I want to just go ahead and present my aunt with a gift today. Give me one of them, Rose Willie. And I want to tell you, happy mother, this one, happy Mother's Day. And one before we go, I, 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 I want you to read. I know. I want you to read. Um, um, let me see. I want you to read this for my mother. Okay, I will. Oh. I will. All right, guys. So we got a couple of little things. We got a couple of things. One, let me present my aunt with her Mother's Day gift because she wants me to read this, but we're going to do it one at a time. So, Auntie, I want to tell you, Happy Mother's Day from the bottom of my heart. You look so amazing today. I watched you grow over the years, coming into America from Jamaica, struggling in motherhood, having to leave your children, and then having to get them back, and working it out in America, making sacrifices, and look at you today. God brought you to sickness and pain, and here you are today on my couch. Happy Mother's Day. I love you. Mm -hmm. Yeah. All right, so this is something you want. You want you want to read it, or you no, want me I to read it? To read it for okay. Me. Start from so this is for your mother. Yeah. All right. So for Pearlie Mitchell, the deceased, the one we love, we just know she's resting in peace right now with the Lord. This is for her. That's why I'm selling. You know, you have to read it first. Hold on, Mom. We're a lot alike. Oh, wait. sorry, guys. How could we not be? You're the one who's taught me how the world works, where I fit in, and what I can do to make the most of this gift. That is my life. That's why I'm celebrating the mom you are and the many ways you've helped shape who I am. Happy Mother's Day, Pearlie Mitchell. 
Guys, this is your girl, Anique, and it is Chit Chat TV, mm -hmm. where we have those hard conversations. Listen, remember to go on over to Chit Chat TV underscore on the gram and follow me, and I promise that I will follow you guys back. And for Chit Chat TV merchandise, of course, for your positive quotes, go on over and get your merchandise. Hit me in the DM, because I will hit you back, I promise. Auntie, thank you for coming on the oh, show today. Hello. Thank you. Very thank much. you, guys. <laughs>